Hi everybody, it's Tim with Tim Boyer Photography. This week's tutorial is three bird photography rules that are getting broken because of technology changes in cameras and in the software that's available for us. So the first thing I want to talk about is the five stops of image stabilization that's available in the Olympus camera systems right now. So there's the M1X that has this, there's the M1 Mark III that has this, Canon's got a camera that's coming out with five stops of image stabilization in the body. This is a real game changer for bird photography because with five stops of image stabilization, we don't need tripods anymore. There's no need to carry a tripod. Maybe if you have a 600 millimeter f4 lens, you're still going to use a tripod. But for most of us out there, we're using smaller lenses because we've gone with micro four thirds, or we're using smaller lenses like the 100 to 400 zooms that uh, Nikon and Canon and a bunch of other people have. So this is a real breakthrough for us. This image of a black and white warbler, I never would have gotten this if I was using my old 600 millimeter lens on a tripod. The bird was just moving around and foraging too much. As it was, being able to use a super light lens like the Olympus Suico 300 f4 IS Pro lens and the M1 Mark III camera from Olympus, I was able to handhold that, have a fast shutter speed, and follow this bird around really easily. So that's a real evolution in bird photography is that having that five stops of image stabilization in the body and then with that particular lens, the 300 f4 lens, it has two stops but together they combine to have seven and a half stops of image stabilization. Now that is remarkable. That is fundamentally ground changing for bird photography. And if you're not a bird photographer, you can still handhold these lenses and lens combinations like this. You'll be able to get images that you normally wouldn't get because you'll be able to handhold the image at a slower shutter speed. Now with bird photography, the bird might move. You still might need a higher shutter speed to freeze the action, but image stabilization in body, working with the lens, you're going to be much better off than if you had traditional DSLR equipment. Now the other thing that I like about the mirrorless cameras, and you can do this with some of the DSLRs, but not all of them, is that there's a fully articulating screen on a lot of these cameras, and so you can get the camera really low to the ground, you don't have to lay in the wet sand anymore, and you can get low angle points of view really easily. And that just makes this all so much easier. I mean, I can flip out the screen, rotate it, lower the camera to the ground, drop to one knee. This just makes it a little bit easier for everybody. And then here's a tripod being used in a way that I'm not sure I ever saw before, but I think she would be better off not using the tripod. The second evolutionary point that I wanna make here is that the technology that's coming out right now with the software programs, this one happens to be uh, Topaz Denoise AI. On the right hand screen, you can see that the background is clear and this bird's pretty sharp up in here. You can see that this background is grainy and it's a little bit fuzzier in here. This is a ISO 12800 image. Topaz is cleaning this up just by putting it on auto. I haven't even gone into the manual mode to fix things. Topaz Denoise AI is a game changer for us. The technology that's involved here, if you shoot with a micro four thirds camera or a crop sensor camera, no matter what, what brand it is, you're going to be able to get really clean background. So here, one one thousandth of a second, ISO 12,800. You can see some of the grain in here and after it's processed, this is all cleaned up. It's so much of a game changer, it just blows my mind. If you're not using Topaz Denoise AI, try it. Get a trial version of it and uh, go back and process some images. I used to have the 50D from Canon and the 20D from Canon, and I am going back and fixing images with Topaz Denoise AI because it's that good. All those images that I kept because I liked them, but I thought they were garbage because of the noise, I can fix those. So noise doesn't matter anymore. Sensor size doesn't matter anymore. All because we have this brand new technology that really helps us clean up our images. The third evolutionary change that I want to talk about, and this really to me is a game changer as well, is that with mirrorless cameras, you can see the highlight alerts and your exposure before you take the picture. We can change the exposure while we're looking through the camera and we're going to be able to get these really nice images like this. I was overexposed, I had the highlight alerts on, I could tell where I was overexposed. I increased my shutter speed so that I would have a correct exposure and I was able to get a really good exposure before I started taking pictures. 
this to me is a game changer. Now there's no reason that we should have blown out highlights anymore because we can see the exposure, we can see the blown out highlights, the overexposed highlights before we take the picture. If you want to improve your bird photography and take better bird pictures, hit the subscribe button, it's in the lower right hand corner, and then click on the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. I also want to reassure you that most of the rules of bird photography, and I use rules in quotes here because they're not really rules, they're guidelines. Um, I did this one, 10 rules of bird photography, a uh, long time ago. I'll put a link in it up above. It's these things still pertain. In the seven more rules of bird photography, those things still hold true. To learn even more about bird photography, and get better at bird photography, pick up a copy of my book, Learn the Art of Bird Photography. It's available on Amazon as a Kindle and a trade paperback. Thanks for watching this week. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.